The <clears throat> Badger football team will take on Nebraska this Saturday, 7 p.m., uh, nationally televised game on ABC. ESPN College Game Day is also going to be in town on Saturday, and the location for the show will be determined probably sometime tomorrow. Uh, with that, head coach Brett Bielema is here. We'll have some opening comments and take questions. Yeah, I thought Sunday, uh, after we watched the film, there's some things in all three phases of the game that were really good teaching. Obviously, in a game like that, I think a lot of people don't realize how much uh, that benefits our football team. A great example is right before the half. Uh, we had three timeouts. Uh, they got the ball, and we were able to make a defensive stand. We used two of the timeouts to get the offense the ball back with about two and a half minutes, and then able to get one more touchdown out. To get that price, uh, to, to be able to do that in live situation is, is worth its weight in gold for future uh, future games down the road. We recognize offensively, Jared Averdaris, obviously a lot of guys had a good game. Nick Toon had another big numbers game, but Abby, all over the field, is just doing some unbelievable things, uh, especially as a double returner as well. Defensively, Patrick Butcham had his best game. Special teams, Derek Landish has been outstanding for us, uh, has grown in every game in his role, uh, really doing some good things. Chuma Holfer on offensive scout and Cameron Onko had a good week on the defensive scout team. Injury-wise, Josh Oglesby uh, be, be with us this whole week. He basically got in a little bit last Friday, did the pregame warm-ups, but we didn't use him on Saturday. Uh, Shelton Johnson uh, should be back Tuesday or Wednesday. I thought Des did a nice job filling in for him on, on Saturday. We've had a couple guys step up in those situations. Patrick Muldoon um, is back 100% full go. He practiced on Sunday back from the elbow injury. And Conrad Zegzeps, he actually got in the game, did some good things. So getting closer back to full strength, the only two guys that will be out for the duration since the season started is obviously Kyle Costing and Devin Smith. So uh, getting back to being healthy. Um, just an exciting time right now, obviously, uh, uh, to open up Big Ten play. But, you know, I told our team yesterday, how many times can you as a player or a coach uh, say that you're going to be involved with a with the start of league play and a new divisional alignment against an opponent, um, the caliber of Nebraska and the tradition, the history, everything they brought with it, that they bring with themselves uh, in addition to being just a really good football team this year. So uh, exciting time, I think, in Camp Randall should be rocking. I, I know I'm, I'm excited to see that atmosphere, if it can get anywhere close to Ohio State game a year ago, just the excitement, the energy. I know our kids really fed off of it. Uh, started the game off the right way, so we encourage everybody to get in their seats for the student newspapers, anything you do to encourage the students to get there, um, uh, to be in as much red as possible and make that place electric. It should be a great time. So uh, with that, I'll uh, open up for questions. Brett, your uh, counterpart, Bo Pelini, played down the historical significance, but do you want your players to embrace that part of it? I, I do. I don't want to get into contradiction with, with, with but I understand what you're saying. Uh, I, I, I think it's part of our obligation as coaches. Coach Alvarez always kind of in, in, uh, emphasized that to the team when I was here with him. Uh, going back to my time prior with other places, the more you can educate kids on the history of the program and the history of college football, I think is a great thing. Um, kids today are, are different. You know, the kids that we're recruiting now know Wisconsin as being good their entire lives. You know, not only the 17, 18 year olds I'm recruiting, but the guys on our team, they don't know Wisconsin as anything but being good. So they don't know, remember the bad years uh, or, the, or the past history. Uh, they weren't alive in 1974, the last time these two teams met, you know, so. It's 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 uh, part of our obligation. It's something I think our kids like. Usually, one of the uh, the best gauges of how much interest or hype there is for something is what happens to you when you go to the gas station or when you're driving <laughs> down the, the street. So, in the last few days, what anything that has happened that you gauge from fans or people on the street? You, you know, um, I'll go back just even to you know during the summer and all that stuff. The people, uh, the attention that was drawn to this game, and, and as you know, we kind of conduct a one week mentality, but uh, from. Ticket requests, the people saying things at, at public events and outings uh, during the season. I don't, I'm not seeing all that much. You know, we're, when I'm driving in, it's really early. When I'm driving home, it's really late. You know, so you don't uh, see a lot of people. Um, but uh, it, it's just fun because I know there is an awareness out there. And something we kind of started last week. I started prepping our kids. Uh, you know, last Thursday, a little informal team meeting that we have on Thursday nights. I kind of talked about. Um, you know, everybody has a plate, and on that plate, you can only put so much. If you put too much on it. Things become to fall off it, you know. And, and you got football, you got academics. This is a busy time for us uh, academically. You're starting to get into midterms and stuff like that. So our kids really have to be great about where their focus is. Yeah, Brett Carl Pelini has said their defense isn't where he expects it to be later in the year. But people always talk about the complexity of that defense and the flexibility of things they can do. As you look at that as a forward defensive coordinator. What jumps out at you, what they do, that makes it difficult on a quarterback? Well, I, I think first off, they're very fast. Um, I think 
Uh, when they come into this league, what people are going to first realize is, is uh, you know, from a personnel standpoint, they're extremely gifted athletically on defense. Uh, really have some special players at all three positions, at the linebacker, DB, and uh, defensive line position guys, and you really have to be aware of where they are at all times. Uh, I think Carl and, and Bo together, I mean, you have two great defensive minds there that uh, if you really want to have a great, and you ought to see those guys uh, talk one time, I bet you'd get a, a live conversation going. But um, I, I just think that they really, it is complex, but it's also very, if you, if you really understand what they're trying to do, it's pretty basic as well in the concepts and ideas. A couple weeks ago, um, openly said that when he coached you in '91, that he, he could picture you as a head coach. Uh, I'm curious, from your bad point, what you saw from him as a young head coach, and kind of how you guys have maintained that friendship for so many years. Yeah, um, Bo and I know basically common friends very, very well. I've known Bo over the years, and uh, anytime we have any type of coaching convention and stuff like that, um, but yeah, we probably both have come a long way since uh, when we knew each other at that point. Um, you know, the, the thing I've admired is, you know, he took over a program and he, he put his stamp on it right away. I think the things that he believes in, you see it really come across uh, in the film, especially defensively, but also offensively. They're very, uh, you know, player-oriented. I think they let the players that play well do what they do do best. And, and uh, on the same account, they play very, very fast. Uh, and I think he has probably evolved as a head coach much the same way I have. Two other players on offense. What jumps out at you when you look at Martinez and then Burkhead? Well, uh, I think Burkhead is a throwback. Uh, a guy that really, the more you watch him play, you realize he really loves the game. I, I think uh, Martinez, uh, you know, I've been watching him, uh, you know, last year because he knew what was coming. But as you study him and watch him now, I mean, he is, he's very, very fast. I mean, everybody knows fast, but he is, I mean, he pulls away from people. Um, you know, in the throwing game, uh, you know, you he lets guys make, go up and make plays. Uh, they have a couple guys that really can streak down the field. The, I, the one thing I've really enjoyed over the last 48 hours watching film is I think Nebraska players are a lot like Wisconsin players for once. I think they both really love to play the game. Um, you can see that they truly go 100 miles an hour and, and, and really enjoy the environment of a college football game. Yeah. What, if anything, has jumped out at you about what's transpired with Big Ten teams through non conference play? Uh, to be quite honest, Tom, I, I I haven't watched any Big Ten team other than you know catching the highlight highlights on Saturday night. Uh, if you're talking about you know I know there's some teams that lost to FCS teams, and um, you know I say it all the time when we go to that Big Ten meetings in, in July, at the end of July before we kick off. I wish every team in our league the best of luck and success in September uh, because we're all affected by it. Has it reinforced somewhat the value of a quarterback nowadays? When you see the teams that are really doing well, they have the not necessarily even a passing quarterback, mm -hmm. just a kind of a vibrant quarterback um, to make things happen. What I see is I, I see teams that traditionally have success have a good system in place and there's not a lot of change. Um, at least that's the case for us and, and that's, that's kind of what we've stuck to. Um, I do think there's a big statement from our program and the fact that I remember a few years back playing uh, an FCS team uh, in Cal Poly who, you know, I didn't know what was going to be the outcome on Saturday. Uh, had a good idea and an indicator, and really all last week I was in an opinion and a mode and his frame of mind uh, that this was going to be a game that we should be able to play well, play well, and play a lot of people. Okay. Right. Mike Ball has undergone maybe two transformations in the last year. One between the years last year after he fell out of the rotation a little bit and then came back and at the end, and then physically in the offseason this year. What, what do you think is more important? of those two that have led to where he is today? Well, um, the, the immediate effect physically is just the, 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 the burst and the speed and the pure things that you see him do on the football field. But a lot of that is because of the hardened uh, mind. You know, a guy that's uh, been in third down situations where he had to pick up a rush edge, you know, and also a guy that, you know, there's a play and it may go un unnoticed by most people, but early on in that UNLV game, he came free and he doesn't have a rear view mirror. He doesn't have, but he was able to pick his feet up because there's a guy trying to click his heels. And I had one of the NFL scouts say to me, Brett, how many times did you coach that? Uh, or, you know, like making a joke, relays and understand he's doing some things naturally and instinctive that uh, a lot of people just don't do. You've obviously seen a lot of really good defensive fronts over the years in Ohio and Ohio State. Does Nebraska compare? And what does this challenge do for your offensive linemen? How jacked up do they get? Uh, I think the exact comparison to last year when we get ready to play Ohio State at home under the lights 
national big picture stage. Uh, Iowa had a great defensive line, really all four positions. And Nebraska, Crick, whether he plays or not plays, they're still very good, very dominant, uh, very aggressive, um, physical group. So there will be a lot of uh, carryover from that to, to this year. And um, our offensive line wants to get all these accolades and all this, uh, you know, which is very well deserved. Obviously, they've been as good as anybody out there. Um, I thought it was interesting. Sports Illustrated contacted us and has an article that will come out this week on our offensive line play. And, and you know, I at first wasn't going to do it, then I kind of decided to let it happen. They did it last week, so it wasn't a distraction uh, to our preparation this week. But how many times does Sports Illustrated ask to come in and do an article on offensive linemen? It's very rare. Talk about the importance of uh, seeing how your kids react in certain situations. The one situation maybe they haven't been in the non-conference is being in a four-quarter game. Is there? Any downside to that, as you see as a coach, so far from what you've gone through the first four games? Yeah, um, that's why we did keep uh, through the last three games. We kept uh, two games for sure. The majority of our starters started the fourth quarter. I wanted them to get through the third quarter, jump around, to be quite honest, uh, to, to get through into the fourth quarter and start start preparation. Uh, we've done some things. We brought them back on Sunday and conditioned them a little bit more. Uh, but, you know, we haven't been in a competitive situation much beyond the, the second quarter. But... That is something I'm not really concerned uh, a great deal about with this group because because of the way they think, because of the way they're wired. Do you think your defense is facing things in the non-conference schedule to get ready for uh, Nebraska's offense in terms of tempo and a mobile quarterback? Yeah, and, you know, Northern Illinois was about as quick a tempo as you I think they're going to be a quicker tempo than Nebraska. So Nebraska runs a no huddle, but I don't, um, you know, they, I do know they, they quicken the pace a little bit here and there. It's some things you can really see off the TV copy. Um, but, uh it, again, you know, we haven't been tested in a four-quarter game with that type of tempo. That's the part that we got to understand. Okay. If I remember correctly, you had Jeff Lewis run quarterback on the scout team last year against somebody because he was fast. Who do you tap to try to replicate Martinez's speed? And do you anticipate there's going to be an adjustment period in-game for your defenders who haven't seen that? Yeah. Um, uh, Merritt's is, uh, 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 yeah, Barrett's, uh, is uh, the guy that if you actually lined up our entire football team, uh, that kind of surprised me. Uh, Herb's told me this during the summer. He might be the fastest guy on our football team. Uh, just Lance has got extremely quick feet, um, so he's been doing a nice job really since uh, uh, preparing against Northern Illinois. We actually grabbed Stave. Uh, Stav comes down and throws Kelly uh, against our one and two D. Uh, so it's kind of a mixed bag there. But uh, Lance, I, I think I'm not saying he's Taylor Martinez, otherwise he might be playing. But um, he's doing a really nice job of simulating. Yeah. Coach. Go, excuse me, Coach, so kind of along the same lines as Rob's question. You always talk about how the team overcomes the first time they face adversity. You didn't face a lot of adversity in the non-conference schedule. How prepared do you think the guys are? Well, I think in the first quarter of Northern Illinois and, and obviously this past weekend, we did have a little adversity in all three phases of the game, offense, defense, and special teams, and we made a big deal of it on our Sunday teaching. So, um, again, nothing will, will uh, nothing on, on our schedule to this date will be Nebraska. I get it, but... I have seen them react favorably, and we talk about it all the time. And a good core of what helped us win last year against Iowa State or against Ohio State and Iowa, and handled a lot of those guys are back. Um, you know, Jake Byrne and Pedersen came in for uh, Lance Kendricks when we when he went down. You had a number of the old linemen that are with us right now that that went in when guys went down last year. So, uh, and of course the running backs, both of those guys came in when John Clay and James White got hurt last year in those two respective games. So. A lot of those guys are back, and, and hopefully we'll be able to respond the same way. Right at the top, you mentioned Sheldon Johnson maybe back either Tuesday or Wednesday. If he's not back till Wednesday, is that enough time to see that he can play? And if, if he can't go, what's your comfort level based on what you saw with Desmond in the last game? Yeah, Des uh, has had a really – actually, Des was ahead of Shelton, uh, was playing better than him in fall camp, and then they kind of flipped uh, on it a little bit. And uh, Des actually had an ankle issue, which, which gave Shelton the opportunity, and Shelton just really took full advantage of it. Uh, Shelton was playing at a pretty high level. He was a guy that I was really excited about the way he was playing. Um, if if Shelton isn't going by Thursday, we'd probably st as long as Des continues to do what he's doing, I don't have any any problem starting him um, and, and letting him play out there a little bit. Uh, and, and then you know, as far as the comfort of putting Shelton in there, if he can run and, and um, do the things physically that you need to do, I I, I wouldn't have any um, hesitation to put him in there with very little practice, just because it, it just would have been his fifth start and he, he's pretty comfortable. Chris Borland seems a lot more comfortable in the middle now. Can you just talk about his importance in, in getting ready, especially for a mobile quarterback, and his ability to fly on the field? Chris, uh, I, th I think 44 and 53, when you, when you sit down and watch a coach's film, those guys are pretty fast. Um, 
Uh, you know, I saw great linebackers were guys that could erase mistakes, and Chris can do that. Um, on the same account, he gets ahead of things. He overran two plays on Saturday that were were uh, big plays for 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 them. So, uh, I think the more games he plays, actually, the more practice he has, the better Chris is going to be becoming. And, and fortunately for us, he's gotten better every game. Brad, how many uh, stories has Barry shared with you about his days at Nebraska? Do you think he'll be flipping a two-headed coin on Saturday? No, no. I know where coaches' of loyalties are. Um, I, I guess I've heard him more that you know when he gets around his cronies, uh, some of his old buddies that he played with come back all the time for games, and I get to hear stories. And um, I do remember uh, you guys probably know what years did Coach Alvarez play? Fifty. 60 somewhere. He, he was. He was. I'll never forget this. We were in a. We were at a Badger event. I can't even. I think we were at uh, Nakoma Country Club, and he had a bunch of people around. He was talking about this big game, his junior year, senior year. And it was 19, maybe, yeah, maybe 69 um, that he played in. And he's going on and on. He keeps hitting me. He goes, "Do you remember that? Do you remember that?" And I'm kind of just going along with it. And he starts naming off all his players. He goes, "You remember him?" I go, "Coach, you're talking about 1969, right?" He goes, yes. I go, I was born in 70. I wasn't even breathing yet. And he's like, jeez. You know, then he kind of goes back to his thoughts. But I, I, I'm excited. I didn't know if he'd want to be the guest captain. Um, but when I sat down and was trying to evaluate, the first thing we do is we actually take an NFL schedule and feed, see who has a bye week the week we have a home game. And that's how we go about it at first. And nothing was matching up for Nebraska. And I kind of just said, well, the guy that makes the most sense would be Coach Alvarez. And when I approached him, he was all over it. So uh, it should be fun to see. With all the attention and everything from the media to obviously the fans, the ticket requests, everything goes with it, is this one of those weeks with the players where you have to guard against them getting overhyped, getting caught up where they've spent themselves by Thursday or Friday before you yeah. can hit the game? A little bit. Again, I, I go back to we talked about it during fall camp. I let some cameras in, things I've never done before, and uh, things really got to a point where the cameras were it's like they weren't even there. Uh, our guys weren't doing anything different. I wasn't doing anything different. Uh, this week, there's not going to be anything involved when we're at practice, but you know, there was some outside interest uh, out of the norm, and we're doing that all yesterday and today. So when we get into our work week on Tuesday, um, uh, we'll, we'll we'll be able to focus on what we need to do. But I, sometimes it's not the media, and it's not uh, uh, the obligations we would ask them to do. It's it's the family request, the friends request, the uh, people that want to come into town on Wednesday and Thursday instead of Friday. So that's what you got to kind of be guarded about. But on the same account. Um, We've worked very hard to get ourselves in the position we are today. Um, I saw that in Brian's uh, press release, it's the first time there's been two top ten teams ranked since 19 whatever it was, uh, 64, 1962. Um, hey, we're here. Um, uh, we don't plan on leaving, um, you know. So let's take advantage of some of the uh, opportunities that are coming in front of us. Brian, you no longer have a 250-pound hammer to tail back, or even the way Monty's changed himself, not even a 230. -pound. Are you pretty confident, you know, in your ability to grind it out or convert short yardage and things like that now that you're getting into playing Big Ten defense? I am, uh, just because of the people we have in front of them and, and Brady and the tight ends. And uh, I, I think we're probably more explosive than we've ever been, and you've seen that probably in the big plays we've gotten. Uh, I understand we don't have that real big back like we had probably with P.J. and John and, uh, you know, obviously Ron Dane before I was here, but I, I like the running backs we have. I wouldn't really trade them in for anything. I know you got a lot of questions in Chicago about the similarity of your program in Nebraska. Do you think there's anything there, and, and what stands out if there isn't anything? Absolutely. I think, uh, first off, look at our, our both of our athletic directors. Uh, both of them are former coaches that had uh, college Hall of Football, uh, Football Hall of Fame careers. Uh, you know, I, I mentioned this in Chicago, but you know, I had heard Tom Osborne speak, speak on three different occasions uh, as a young coach, and uh, to have the opportunity to sit next to him on a bus ride in Chicago to a to a, an event was was awesome, and to, just the knowledge that that man carries, and then for both of them to uh, guide an athletic department now, um, I'm sure if you talk to any coach in Nebraska, just like you would here at Wisconsin, to have an AD that was a former coach is worth its weight in gold. Um, and then it, you know just just the program's philosophies, I think a lot of like you know the history of maybe a strong running game and playing good solid defense uh, since we've been successful here at Wisconsin. Um, I think there's a lot of little things that, now two different things, uh, don't get me wrong, you watch Nebraska's offense, you watch our offense, it's two different animals. Um, that's why I do think for us uh, an advantage we will have is it's very tough for uh, a Nebraska roster to simulate our roster as far as putting scout team work together. Um, I don't even know if they have a fullback or a tight end, you know, that, that kind of does the same things that we do. 
They got Brett. They got their quarterback Denard back last week. And I'm, I'm assuming you guys have seen film on him from previous years. Mm -hmm. Bo says he wouldn't train him for any corner in the country. What do you see when you look at that game? Why he's so good? Well, and, you know, the first game back, you're going to have some issues. But uh, you know, they had two good corners last year, and, and uh, he just is extremely quick. You can tell he's got some natural instincts. He's a fighter. He's very. I can see he fits right into what Bo's mentality is. He's very aggressive, um, and it comes as. You know, second nature to him. He doesn't. There's no hesitation in any action. That his body just naturally quick has quick responses to everything he sees. Probably can't predict their defensive mentality or whatever, but I'm assuming they're going to probably try to put him on two. Do you, do you think with what Nick has shown this year that he's up to that challenge? To the best thing we got going for us right now is is the combination of one and four. I I, I get it. Uh, I think the reason that Nick's uh, been able to have some productive numbers is because of four and forty-eight. Um, you, you have a, a, another wide receiver who can get behind you um, and, and get the deep ball through thrown to him, and then you have Patterson in the play-action game and just a normal route running. That's pretty special. It seemed like uh, Dibble got a lot of snaps. Um, I know he stood out in kick re coverage, um, made a jump there, but is he? Um, he's all seemed to be a high motor guy. Is he starting to get his assignments done and be a little more consistent that way? I think you're exactly right, Tom. The best thing that happened to him, I don't know if you remember, he jumped off sides early in the game, the first or second game, and I, I mean, I lit him up pretty good, and I know Charlie did, and he, he just, hey, you, you can't cost us penalties, you can't play, we can't put you out there excited to watch you play and have negative reactions. And I think he, from that point forward, has really grown. Um, He's been a man child on kickoff coverage. Uh, he's getting more and more reps. He was actually uh, played himself through a little bit of an injury. He, he'd, uh, his knee kind of swelled up on him a little bit, and he just battled himself right through it. Him and Conrad Zagzewski both, that's why I was excited. I think uh, both those guys, high motor guys, high energy, uh, pretty intelligent kids, and, and can really help us uh, with some, some spe specific roles here in league play. Is the plan to still have Alec and the pickoffs this week? Yes, um, Alec and then actually Philip Welch. Uh, we'll kick with us on Wednesday, so there's a chance that Phil might be back with us uh, in some capacity this Saturday as well. Anything else? All right. Thanks, Phil. Thank you. <clears throat>